Welcome to an introduction to predicates and quantifiers. It would be nice to use variables in our mathematical sentences. For example, suppose we wanted to claim that if n is prime, then n plus seven is not prime. This looks like an implication. We could write something like, if p of n, then not p of n plus seven, where p of n means n is prime. But this is not quite right, for one thing, because this sentence has a free variable. That is a variable that we have not specified anything about, it is not a statement. A sentence that contains a variable is called a predicate. Now if we plug in a specific value of n, we do get a statement. In fact, it turns out no matter what value we plug in for n, we do get a true implication in this case. What we really want to say is for all values of n, if n is a prime, then n plus seven is not. We need to quantify the variable. Although there are many types of quantifiers in English, for example, many, few, most, and several others, in mathematics, for the most part, we stick to two, existential and universal. The existential quantifier looks like a capital E facing the wrong direction and is read there exists or there is. For example, the notation shown here is read as there exists an X such that X is less than zero. This asserts there is a number less than zero. The universal quantifier looks like an upside down capital A and is read for all or every. For example, the notation shown here is read as for every x such that x is greater than or equal to zero, which asserts that every number is greater than or equal to zero. As with all mathematical statements, we would like to decide whether quantified statements are true or false. Let's consider the following statement. We read this as for every x, there is some y such that y is less than x. Is this true? The answer depends on what our domain of discourse is. When we say for all x, do we mean all positive integers, or all real numbers, or all elements of some other set? Usually, this information is implied. In discrete mathematics, we almost always quantify over the natural numbers, meaning zero, one, two, three, and so on. Let's take that for our domain of discourse here. For the statement to be true, we need it to be the case that no matter what natural number we select, there's always some natural number that is strictly smaller. Perhaps we could let y be x minus one, but there is a problem. What if x equals zero? Well, if x is equal to zero, then y is equal to zero minus one or negative one, and that is not a number in our domain of discourse. Thus we say the statement is false. In symbols, the given quantified statement is false because there exists an x for every y such that y is greater than or equal to x. And again, the original statement was, for every x, there is just the y such that y is less than x. To show the original statement is false, we proved that the negation was true. Notice how the negation and original statement compare. The negation of, for every x, there exists a y such that y is less than x is equivalent to, there exists an x for every y such that y is greater than or equal to x. Notice in this intermediate step, the negation passed over the quantifiers, which caused the quantifiers to switch type. Notice how the original statement has for every x, and the negation has there exists x, and the original statement has there exists y, and the negation has for every y. And then the negation of y less than x is y greater than or equal to x. And down below we have some extra notes on quantifiers and negation. Again, the negation passes over the quantifier and the quantifier switches type. Before we go, let's take a look at two more quantified statements. And here we'll assume X and Y are real numbers. So first we have, for every X, there exists a Y such that cosine X equals Y. And notice X is the input angle into the cosine function and Y is the output value. And it is true that for every angle inputted into the cosine function value, there does exist an output value y, where we know the output of the cosine function value will always be on the closed interval from negative one to one, which we can tell from the graph below. This quantified statement is true. Now the second quantified statement looks almost the same, except notice x and y have been switched. So the second quantified statement is for every y, there exists an x such that cosine x equals y. And this actually is false. Again, if we take a look at the negation of the given quantified statement, 
we would have there exists a y for every x such that cosine x doesn't equal y. And this is true because remember y is always on the closed interval from negative one to one, but we stated at first that y could be any real number. And therefore, there does exist a y for every x where cosine x doesn't equal y, which is why the given quantified statement of for every y, there exists an x such that cosine x equals y is false. I hope you found this helpful.